we need to hear the teachings. And that's why we, you know, get up early and we get in the car or we get on a bus or we take an Uber. We, you know, walk as used to be what people did. They would walk a long way for days and days in order to hear the teachings. There's a great value placed on listening to the teachings, but there's a reason. It's not just entertainment and it's not just information, but it's actually really a kind of awakening or a, a, a notification that you need to be alert Alert to what? Well, alert to the fact that uh, we are impermanent. And Rinpoche used to tell this beautiful story, wonderful, beautiful story, about his, one of his teachers, Tuk Arik, who's actually a very, very, very great master in Rinpoche's own family. And Rinpoche had so much respect for this great, great teacher that, uh, as was customary in the region where his teacher's meditation house was, his little tiny hut, nobody would hunt there out of respect for the teacher. They wouldn't even ride their animals out of respect for the teacher. They would walk beside their animals to arrive at the teacher's house. And they would prostrate, some of them would prostrate, like do bowing, and they would bow all the way up the mountainside to his house in great reverence to his realization and his, um, his being. You know, for us as modern people, we, we don't exactly understand that thing about respect for someone's being. We might have respect for their work, we might have respect for their, you know, their creations, we might have respect for, you know, their family or their sense of humor or who they were for us as a friend or a neighbor or a countryman. Even we could have respect for a great poet. I know I, know I do have respect for a poet. But they had respect for his being, that he would live in the world, that he would shine the meaning of his realization in the world. And so when you would be received in his home, he was, it was so small. You know, he could cook and meditate and sleep without moving much. You know, he could reach everything. His house was so small. And uh, he would say, Welcome, welcome, come, you know, come in. And they would come in, and the, and the people who had such respect for him would say, please, please, Lama, please teach me. Teach me the Dharma. Teach me the meaning of life. And he would say, oh, yes, yes, sit, sit. I'll teach you. And then he would say, do you know, do you know that everything is impermanent? Do you know that this earth wasn't here once and now it's here and one day it won't be here? Do you know that seasons change, summer turns to winter, winter turns to summer, and even night and day are just changing. Do you know 
that we are impermanent? And he would, he would, he would repeat and he would say, every minute, every second, it's just changing, it's just changing. Nothing is keepable, nothing is haveable. Even your own body, my own body, is something impermanent and changing. And then he would say, okay, go, go, and meditate on that. And they would go walking, and they would come back the next year walking, and he would receive them so excited to have them come again. And they would request with all their sincerity, please, please, Lama, please teach me the meaning of life. And yes, yes, sit, sit. And he would say, do you know that everything is impermanent? That nothing, absolutely nothing is keepable. No one, no thing. That we are impermanent. The world wasn't here once, now it's here. And one day it won't be here. And the seasons, mountains were oceans and oceans become mountains. Do you know? And if someone happened to say to the Lama, oh, yes, 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 Rinpoche, I know that. I heard that a few times now. You know, here, here, that, it, could you teach me something more? And he would look at them and he would say, more? You think there's something more than impermanence? Well, if you think there's something more than impermanence, then you should just go find somebody who will teach you that. Because really, we know deep in our heart of hearts, there is nothing more than impermanence. You are not going to get anything. You're not going to keep anything. And whatever you have will slip through your fingers. We have only so many breaths in this life. They're numbered. We don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how, but we know. And that means it's so important to understand the meaning of life. What is the meaning of this short life we have. Even if you live to be a hundred, it isn't long. And yet there is an important purpose, important meaning here. And you should be asking that question. What is the meaning of life? And you're not the first, nor will you be the last to ask this question. But you must find the answer because none of this is keepable. And we have only a short time to find the answer to the meaning of life. 